we better keep moving. We've got two more fairly controversial studies that I want to touch on. Tony, you're next again with the EPOC trial looking at frontline cetuximab and chemotherapy in patients with maybe potentially resectable disease. This is clearly a trend we are seeing uh, across the U.S. market of docs in the KRS wild type patient using EGFRs in this patient population. Tell us about this trial. So very interesting. That's the new EPOC, because mm. the original EPOC was uh, published in Lancet, was presented, and you know, was a perioperative strategy around uh, uh, clearly resectable liver metastatic disease from colorectal cancer, and uh, used Folfox pre and post uh, surgery and showed a PFS improvement at three years of close to 7.3 percent. Uh, although that uh, that was that was a positive finding, but it wasn't uh, quite significant in, in in many ways, at least for clinical applicability. Statistically, yes, uh, but clinically, maybe not as much. Uh, so the new epoch uh, was looking at consolidating this further with the addition of an EGFR inhibitor. In this situation, cetuximab uh, for patients with KRAS wild type. The thought is we had a number of studies including Selim, you know, which tried to enrich for this patient population that suggests that response rate was high when you add an EGFR and vitrocetuximab to Folfox or Folfiri, uh, and, uh, and that you end up with improved R0 resection rates. Well, uh, surprise. Uh, this study not only, at least number-wise, had not shown an improvement, but had to be shut down early by uh, the DSMC. Um, uh, because there was a suggestion of a deleterious effect with the addition of cetuximab to Folfox uh, in patients uh, with a liver metastasis. So not only that, at least number-wise, in this preliminary analysis, it looked like it wasn't working. Uh, it suggested that there may be actually some loss of benefit. However, a cautious tale here, uh, this was less than 45% of the patients or of the events expecting events were analyzed. Uh, so at least my conclusion or the conclusion on this study is that although the data were relatively immature, uh, but even with the accumulation of more events, it was unlikely that this will change results and then the addition of cetuximab, very surprising, uh, relatively surprising to chemotherapy, is not beneficial. Now, uh, overall, this was a Folfox plus cetuximab study. And we have two other studies that uh, essentially showed no improvement even in an enriched patient population with KRAS wild type uh, with the addition of cetuximab to Folfox. Uh, COIN study and Nordic study, uh, also Nordic was not Folfox but Flox, uh, or modification of Folfox, a Nordic modification of Folfox. Uh, but those two studies uh, are consistent with uh, a, a lack of benefit from adding cetuximab to Folfox. So in some ways this does not come as too surprising given the lack of benefit that we've seen before. But you just told me panitumumab plus Folfox is fine. So are they different? That, are they the that, same? That was my, the next point that I was Sorry, going to make. I know. But no, the point, you're absolutely right. So why one seems to be so beneficial when the other one actually seems uh, to, be, uh, to add no benefit and perhaps <laughs> take away some? Uh, I don't think anyone really understands that, frankly. Uh, these two uh, uh, biologic agents may be similar, but they're definitely not the same, and they may interact differently with chemotherapy. There's no real rational evidence for that, but clinically at least, this is what the data is showing us, and we have to go by this. I always think it's a northern hemisphere problem. These people all have low vitamin D levels where these studies were done, <laughs> and the positive studies are a little further down on, you know, to closer to the equator. Anybody want to go with that, that theory? I, I, no, not really, but I, I personally <laughs> believe it's more like the way these studies were conducted. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the study design, how the studies, and where the studies were run, not necessarily vitamin D, but UK versus rest of the world, you know, that, that makes a difference. I personally, um, actually, I actually see the difference more between Epoch, a new Epoch was actually micrometastatic state. These mm -hmm. patients were borderline or resectable liver metastasis, and the, if the detrimental effect that you outline or potential detriment happened after the resection. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's similar to N147, right. the adjuvant study that we uh, conducted here, Folfox plus minus Cetuximab, and we actually saw a detrimental effect, which is, I mean, quite obvious, um, 
and uh, we we might harm patients uh, you know, even beyond just the uh, even if we select for conventional care as and in this setting we have to remember we're doing both adjuvant and treating the metastatic disease so and we've got proof around cetuximab at least around the I adjuvant mean, the setting. other issue of course they are different molecules yeah. one brings adcc into play uh, the dosing is different. Panitumumab was was developed after cetuximab. They were very keen on making sure they got a rash, believing that was a pharmacodynamic effect. So, in fact, they're 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 in the same ballpark, but they are actually different drugs.